In this podcast, we're going to talk about media tips for families from the American Academy of Pediatrics. This is one of several episodes that provides you as parents with ideas on how to manage your children's screen time at home. In a previous episode, we talked about the American Academy of Pediatrics guidelines for why it's important to limit screen time. And now we're going to spend some time in this and several other podcasts on how to do that. So the American Academy of Pediatrics suggests that that parents not feel pressured to introduce technology early. And there is a lot of pressure from children, especially older school-age children and middle school-age children, because all their friends have devices. So there's this worry that, gosh, if I don't get my child started by age five or seven or eight, they're somehow going to be left behind. And that's simply not accurate. Media devices were designed to be intuitive, and children can learn very quickly, as As many of us well know, when our our teenage children help us with our own technology because they can figure it out faster than we can. So be okay. Find out what what you're – determine what you're comfortable with as a parent with when you want your child to have a device or have access to devices, whether it's a, a cell phone or a tablet or a computer or even using your phone. The second point is to find out what type of and how much media are used and what media behaviors are appropriate for each child and for you. There should certainly be some time limits. And as a general rule, younger children need less time. Older children may earn more time. But having some consistent limits on the number of hours of media use could really be helpful for you, especially if you're starting early with your children. It is so much easier to have very clear rules that you enforce at early ages rather than dropping the hammer and having rules that you started to enforce when they were 13 or 14 and they've had six or seven years of essentially unregulated use. Now you're going to have a battle. Another suggestion is to select and co-view media with your child so that they can use the media to learn, to be creative, and to share the experiences with your family. Things like having a movie night. And yes, while it's passive, you're doing it together. You can even talk about various parts of the show and what part they liked or how they were feeling during certain parts to make it more of an activity or conversation. Check your children's media use for their health and safety. A lot of teenagers really want their privacy, But from my experience, when teenagers know their parents are checking, they tend to do a bit more self-policing and make better choices versus thinking that they have free reign and they can do kind of whatever they want. And unfortunately, sometimes kids do. Stop use of devices for screens uh, one hour before bedtime. I mean, it sounds like a, a, a difficult rule to enforce, but there's a reason for it. When children are all jazzed up on their screens, when they're plugged in, when they're watching things, their brains are activated. And so it is that much harder for them to slow down and to fall asleep. There are many things that kids could do instead of being plugged in before they go to bed. They could read a book. They could listen to music. They could have conversations with the family. They could... um, spend some time working on other interests. I would not encourage doing homework at the last part of the day, but sometimes teenagers do that as well. Uh, And don't let your children sleep with their devices such as smartphones. And one of the oldest excuses I've ever heard is, I need this for my alarm clock. There are plug-in alarm clocks that are far more efficient and effective that can be used because cell phones, while they may have an alarm clock built in, often don't work because kids forget to turn them on or the volume is set low uh, or they wind up going other places because they can't sleep. They start checking messages or watching YouTube or, or some other uh, TikTok or some other uh, digital platform. So technology out of the bedrooms at nighttime for certain. Discourage entertainment media while doing homework. Many kids will will claim that they can multitask, and study after study after study has clearly demonstrated that is simply not accurate. They might be able to retain some information, but our brains just are not very good at getting 
all the information when we have multiple things going on. And perhaps you as parents, if you're trying to watch a show and also do something that requires some level of, of, of concentration, you know, that can be challenging. You know, if you're just doing dishes and, and, and watching something, maybe that's okay. But if you're trying to, you know, get information into your head to, so you can do well on the history quiz or trying to learn a concept and also at the same time watching a TikTok video, it's really hard to get that information accurately. And so kids don't multitask any better than adults do. Uh, so discouragement, entertainment media, sometimes background music is certainly okay. It's a different form of media. Decide on media-free unplugged locations at home, such as a bedroom, or unplugged media-free times, such as meal times during the day, so that families can have quality time together. Engage in family activities that promote well-being, such as sports, reading, and talking with each other, board games, card games, uh, hikes, walks, projects, things where people are coming together. Set a good example. Turn off the TV and, and put your smartphone on. Do not disturb during those media free times with your family. Something that you may have already experienced, and I certainly hear from, from many children, it seems unfair that we have to follow these rules during mealtime, but our parents are plugged in all the time. Uh, there's a bit of hypocrisy that as children move toward their preteen and teen years, they can't help but notice. And so it might be something that you notice for yourself. Use sites like Common Sense Media to help you decide if movies, TV shows, apps, or video games are age and content appropriate for your children and your family values. And then share your family media rules with caregivers or grandparents to help ensure that the rules are consistent. This gets a little bit dodgy because sometimes you're really depending on that friend, um, your grandparents or your parents to help you out. Maybe you're not paying them to watch their own grandchildren. They're just doing that as a favor. So it might feel a little awkward to say, I'd like you to help me out by watching my children, but oh, by the way, make sure they don't have any television time when they're at your house. Uh, and so if that's the case and you have to, it, avoid that conflict or offending them and you really need their help, maybe on the days that they spend time with that caregiver or grandparent who maybe has more relaxed rules about screen time at their house, on those days, your children have already hit their limit. They don't need more screen time when they come home. And it's okay to let that go. But if you have caregivers that are anxious to follow your rules, or if your grandparents or parents are, are willing to support your family's plan, Please help them with that by sharing this information. Talk with your children and teens about online citizenship and safety. This includes how to treat others with respect online, avoiding cyberbullying and sexting, two topics that we'll spend more time in different podcasts on. You know, and be wary about online socializations and solicitations from others uh, and how to safeguard privacy. So many kids are connected to online chat rooms and, and, and platforms where they're having conversations with people they don't know. And you're not necessarily sure who they are and if they're really who they say they are. So it's really important to, to help increase your children's knowledge about that without scaring them but they have hard and fast rules because you are the parent. And finally, encourage your school and community to advocate for better media programs and healthier habits. Uh, for example, organize a screen-free week in your, in your community, your neighborhood, in your school with other parents, teachers, and neighbors. To recap, recreational or entertainment screen time is not bad. This is especially true if parents manage screen time for their children, so children are exposed to high quality and age-appropriate content. Please consider using the AAP, the American Academy of Pediatrics Family Screen Time Guideline Worksheet that you can find at their website. The link is in the show notes. Generally, less screen time is better. Thank you for tuning in and considering this parenting topic. I hope this information added to your growing toolbox for parenting your child or children. Please consider exploring other topics in this series. Remember, no one parenting tool can do everything. We need many tools to become the best parents for our children. Your children's future depends on you and the time and effort you invest in them today.